So we're back in Kruger. We can never resist. And we are driving the length of the park again. But this time, instead of taking seven weeks like we did for Lost in Kruger, we're doing it in four days. Thank you very much. We'll have a great day. We're in Kruger Park. We stay just outside the park and get into Pafuri as it opens. This is almost the furthest north you can go in South Africa, right up on the border with Zimbabwe and one of the most underrated and beautiful parts of the park. We're heading south again, planning to make our way back to Mozambique. Making a cup of coffee, gonna fill up the flask as well, um, so we can have some hot chocolate and a coffee while we're on the road. And then we'll head down this Preferi road that I love so much. We are at Crook's Corner, which is the boundary between South Africa and Mozambique and Zimbabwe. Um, so when we were in Mapungubu, we were on the border between Botswana, Zimbabwe and South Africa. This one's with Mozambique um, and it's got quite a cool story. It apparently used to be a favorite spot for smugglers and gun runners and ivory poachers and all sorts of people trying to avoid the long arm of the law. They'd come here because if the lawmen from any of the territories caught up to them, they could just switch over into one of the other territories and uh, be across an international boundary and technically be out of reach of the, the lawmen from that country that was trying to get them. So it's, it's quite cool. It's quite a legendary little corner, this. It's also right on the end of that Preferi River Drive. So we're gonna start heading back now and then we're gonna head south towards Shingwidzi. So let's see, um, it's been quite a quiet morning game-wise. This cold weather is not the best for game viewing, but still amazing and I absolutely love this part of the park. Hopefully we have a little bit more luck with game on the way down to Shingwidzi, but even if we don't, it's just awesome being back in the Kruger. Absolutely love it here, it's the best. What you got there, Bea? A leopard, a male leopard, um, and me and Tim think that it could be the one we saw the last time in this area, Shinguetsi. Oh, it's beautiful, huh? We would have to come back in the morning to check on him, but what a great way to end off our first day back in the park. So we are in Shingwidzi, uh, which is awesome. Me and Bianca actually haven't stayed in Shingwidzi together. We're staying in one of the huts, they call it. It's just basically a very simple bedroom and you use uh, communal bathrooms. Uh, we would prefer to camp, but the camping is completely packed, as you can see. And this time of year, it's very busy. And also we booked at the very last minute, as we always tend to do, so we were lucky to get anything. We're going to do a little bit of editing, have a very simple dinner, have an early night, and try to get out so we can do that loop by Sereni tomorrow morning, which is one of my favorite roads in the park. But yeah, good day. Awesome to be back in the park. Good morning, guys. This is my favorite time to be in my favorite place. <laughs> It is six o'clock in the morning, the gates open at six. We just got out into the park. The sun is not quite up yet. It's a nice cold winter's morning. We've got a flask of hot water that we can make some coffee with. And we are heading to the S56, which is the road that leads to Sereni, where we have had incredible sightings before. So we're gonna do that for our morning drive. We're heading down to Lataba tonight, and then Satara the following night and then a long drive to Crocodile Bridge and then we're gonna get our PCR test and then we're gonna go to Mozambique again, hopefully. So it's a bit of a whirlwind Kruger trip this time around, but uh, you know, me and Bianca, we can't resist Kruger trips. We have a leopard in a tree eating an impala. Pretty sure this is the leopard that we saw in Sereni last time we were here when we did the seven weeks in Kruger trip. So that's pretty cool. 
his markings on his face look almost identical, but uh, definitely got more scratches on his nose. But um, that makes sense. If he's a dominant male leopard in this area, he would have had to fight for his territory a couple of times. But yeah, he's feeding in the tree, and we shouldn't have a good angle because there's a whole bunch of cars here that got spots before us. But we managed to get like a really nice angle of his face while he feeds, so getting some cool shots. Nice way to start the morning drive. So we had a, a relatively quiet rest of our morning drive, but it was still wonderful. I absolutely love that road. It's one of my favorites in Kruger, so it's always worth checking out. There's so much game there. We just packed up at Shinwidzi now, and we're heading down to Lataba. I'm busy gonna drive, and I'm gonna try and do some work. I'm going to send us off. There's a massive herd of Ellie's sitting in the river right by Shinwidzi, which is really, really awesome. One of the many vital roles that elephants serve during the dry season is that they dig for water in seemingly dry riverbeds, and once they've had their fill, other animals are able to drink. checked into Lataba, put our bags down, and headed back out straight away. Afternoon game drive time, Savannah in hand, and hopefully we find some more predators. I'm driving, so I don't have a Savannah in hand, but this is my absolute favorite thing in the entire world to do. And you know what the trick is to enjoying it? Is enjoying it even if you don't find any animals. It's just so nice to be out in the bush at this time of day beautiful soft golden light it's just incredible i love this place so much Morning guys, so I went on a morning drive this morning. I just headed through to the Engelhart Dam here by Lataba. Um, pretty quiet, haven't seen a huge amount to be completely honest, but it's still beautiful. I just, I love being in the bush while it wakes up. So I've been sitting here quietly on the water's edge, getting some cool shots of some young waterbuck rams playing and practicing, you know, and learning how to fight and just enjoying the morning sounds and having a cup of coffee. Um, I'm gonna head back towards camp shortly and then next you guys will see will be me and B heading down towards Satara, which is one of my favorite camps. I'm a little bit nervous for how busy it's gonna be as we head south. Generally you tend to have fewer sightings in the north, but uh, there's fewer people as well, which is really great. I mean now as we start to really get into the, the busiest part of the park, I'm a little bit nervous for how many cars and stuff there's gonna be on the road, but uh, you know when that happens, you just gotta make sure you get out super early so that there's not that many people around. But yeah, so I'm gonna have another cup of coffee here, get some more sounds, see if anything else comes down to the dam. Um, but if not, slowly start to make my way back to camp. 
really beautiful morning though. What you got there, Ben? The Olifant River. You're looking for hyenas? Yeah, I'm looking for anything right now. <laughs> We've just come from the Mapani side of life. And you can barely... You barely see any game there. <laughs> So we cross the Olifants River and instantly the fell changes. It actually changes a little bit before the Olifants River to be to be fair. Like straight after that few points the fell changes. And so hopefully the sightings will go up accordingly as well. You basically exchange Mapani for crowds as you drive south through the park. <laughs> We secured a campsite in Satara, had a little lunchtime nap, and then headed out for an afternoon drive. So we ended up having a pretty quiet afternoon drive. I uh, didn't see a huge amount of game, but the game that we did see was really beautiful. Just beautiful lights and the terrain out there is incredible, so it's still worth being out. So we took the H7 this afternoon. We left the S100, which is one of my favorite roads in the park, and one of the best roads in the park, because I think I'm not the only person that loves it. Um, but we've left it for tomorrow morning, so we'll get up early tomorrow and go check out the S100 and then we have a very long drive down to Crocodile Bridge. But tonight we're going to play a little bit of Yatsin now, which is uh, B's new new favorite, I was going to say board game obsession, but it's not a board game, it's a dice game. Have a couple of glasses of wine, cook some chicken on the fire and have a nice chicken salad. We need something light, we've been eating very heavy. Um, and just, yeah, have a good, nice, relaxed evening in the bush. found a beautiful female lioness walking on the road. Um, she's calling, so I think she's probably trying to locate the rest of her pride, but she definitely took an active interest in some of the animals that are around, so she's hunting as well, I think, but all by ourselves, which is the incredible thing. That's why you gotta get up early in the mornings in Kruger.
disappeared off the road, unfortunately, and walked straight off into the bush in that direction. So maybe that's where her pride is. But either way, that was super cool. It's amazing having a sighting like that in Kruger Park at this time of year all to ourselves. On the S100. On the S100. Um, you only get that when you get up super early in the morning. What you got, B? Malachite Kingfisher. That's awesome. Not the most common, but when you see them, wow. Super beautiful. Hanui Rasmus, a fan of the channel, was kind enough to direct us to some big male lines off the main road. Thanks, Hanu. We just stopped off in Chikwani. It's the picnic site between Skakuza and Satara. It's one of the nicest ones, I think. It's a little bit windswept today, but awesome. And we got some jaffles, breakfast jaffle, and venison pie, and B got a chicken and mushroom pie. Oh, it was pretty yummy. And get back on the road now and see what we can see. Breakfast jaffle is a must. Okay, <laughs> <Hey>, bye. <laughs> We took the H10 and the S122 down to Lower Sabi. It is definitely the less popular road in this area, but that means fewer cars and we've had some amazing sightings here in the past. This time around we weren't so lucky, but did see this common rebuck, which is a first for me and Kruger. And then, as often seems to happen on the Sabi River, Kruger showed off with an incredible croc and elephant sighting. Watching these gentle giants feed at our eye level, literally meters from the car, was just amazing. So we just got down to Crocodile Bridge. Uh, fairly long day in the park. The weather is really miserable. It's about 15 degrees, 14 degrees Celsius. Uh, and it's not raining. <laughs> so not great weather. Not quite how we imagined our last evening in Kruger. It's really cold. You can see I got my snow jacket out. We're making a little pasta for us and then we're gonna <laughs> climb into the eye camper and watch the movie. So tomorrow we'll go on a nice long game drive just to try and make up for what turned out to be a cold and wet afternoon um, that we spent in camp instead of out in the bush like we meant to be. We are gonna now take a nice long drive through the park this morning uh, just to finish things off a little bit better than they were last yesterday afternoon. Um, the weather's a bit better, it's still cloudy but it's not so windy at least. Um, so yeah, hopefully we, hopefully we have some luck on our last game drive. Wild dogs to start the morning, which is awesome. It's not a brilliant sighting, not gonna lie. They're sleeping under a tree and we can barely even see them, but it's the first dogs we've seen on this trip. And as I think most of you know by now, if you watch the channel, they're my absolute favorite. So we will sit with them for a while, but um, 
eight o'clock in the morning and they're sleeping under a tree, they're probably not gonna move much. But we'll, we'll sit it out a little bit. There's some zebras that are sniffing them out, but I don't think anything will happen there. Wild dogs hunt so effectively that they often have some vultures keeping them company, waiting for some scraps, the cleanup crew of the bush. So we ended up taking the S25, that is a back route basically along the Crocodile River through to Bergendal and Malalan. It's infamously corrugated. <laughs> and I should say to be I regret taking it just because the corrugations are so bad. The reason we took it is because the park is so busy at the moment, we've been trying to avoid the area around Skakuza basically, because I know there's gonna be about a billion cars there. So I prefer to be on a, you know, maybe have a slightly reduced chance of game or sightings on a small, quiet side road like this. But if you do have a sighting, you either get it to yourself or you share it with a couple of people. And we have found a little leopard that is sleeping on an anthill. And when we got here, there was two other cars here. They've both left. So we now have the sighting entirely to ourselves. So this is really awesome. At the moment, she's literally lying on her back <laughs> on an anthill, just behaving like a cat, just like a domestic cat. But yeah, very cool and amazing to have it to ourselves. That might just be the thumbnail for the episode. We'll see. Beautiful young leopard sleeping on an anthill, basically rolling around and yawning and looking at us. Just absolutely special, 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 special. So glad we did the morning drive. So glad we chose this road. This is a more appropriate way to finish our North to South Kruger trip. Elephant saying goodbye to us as we leave the park. Goodbye, Kruger. Been so good as always. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend doing north to south in four days. I'd love to have spent some more time doing it, but uh, it was still amazing. What an incredible place. We saw the big five plus wild dogs again. A couple of amazing sightings. Um, but yeah, incredible episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please go and hit like and subscribe to our channel. Um, it is the easiest way to keep us on the road. We are desperately trying to make this project sustainable and um, you know all the support that we can get from you guys is appreciated and tune in next week for the next episode i think it's going to be mozambique but um, our plans are a little bit to be confirmed so we'll have to just wait and see <laughs>